it's on. I've gotten a lot of requests to review Guga Foods and today we're going to be reviewing one of his most popular videos on how to tenderize a steak with baking soda, which for me it'll be something completely new. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James. I have plenty of other cooking videos and recipes on my YouTube channel and I do have my cooking course out. So if you are interested in learning a little more on how to cook or the basics from beginning to more advanced, then you should definitely check it out. So hopefully you will enjoy this video guys and if you do, be sure to share, like and subscribe and let's get started. These are what I like to call $1 steak. As you can see, sometimes you get lucky and you mm. get nice marbling between them. <laughs> I'm just joking. Because these steaks come from the cheapest roast there is. And I'm talking about the eye round. Me and this cut of meat are not friends. Eye round cut is a smaller cut from the round. It's very tough because this is the hindquarters of the cow and that part of the cow has been, you know, walking around and moving around quite a bit. So the meat is very tough. You have to really tenderize this meat if you want to use it properly. And that's why it's cheap. It and for good reason. You see, the problem with this cut right here is that it is very tough. Mm. However, it's also extremely flavorful. Mm. So my goal is- This is a round cut, so it's not as expensive, but anytime that you're cleaning steak or beef like this, you want to take off the excess fat, but you want to be sure not to take so much meat with that fat and with the silver skin. The fat you can see here is the excess clumpy white part. The silver skin is that silvery type sinew that's on top of the meat. You want to get rid of that as well because you don't want to be eating that. So instead of cutting away at it, you can take a little piece of the silver skin and then take a kitchen paper towel or something but to help you pull back on it. So if you pull back on it and then use the knife to gently cut away at the meat, you won't butcher the meat so much. I have done some crazy experiments with it. Make sure you check that out mm. on the description down below later on. But once I remove all of the silver skin and cleaned it up, you can see I ended up mm. with some beautiful steaks. He did good and he also did good portioning the sizes. They look almost identical. That is perfect for today's experiment because we're going to try to tenderize this with baking soda. If we take a quick look at all these little cuts, you'll see a lot of little white lines. Now this is what we call marbling. Higher qualities of meat will have a more even spread of marbling. The marbling is fat and the fat infuses a lot of flavor into the meat. If your steak, and I'm not talking about this, I mean, let's say an intricate or another cut has a very thick piece of not marbling but fat, you may want to cut that out because if you have a piece of fat that big, uh, it's nothing unless you like eating the fat, it's, it's not nice. That sounds weird for you, let me explain. Chinese restaurants all over the world have been using this technique for decades. If you ever had beef and broccoli, most likely you had baking soda too. That's because they claim that it makes the steak a lot more tender. Well, today we're gonna put that to the test 100%. You see, this is one of the reasons why I don't eat out a lot is because sometimes you don't even know what restaurants do with the food. And I'm not saying that is a bad way. Most of the time it's good, but then again, sometimes when you go out to eating at places, you don't even want to know what goes on in some kitchens. You don't, and you'll be surprised as well. But, um, well, I'll leave it at that. Baking soda. To be more specific, sodium bicarbonate. The most interesting thing about this is that people use it for many different reasons. I mean, did you know that if you mix this in water, it is great for plants? Yes, it can be plant food. That is something I was not expecting. And believe it or not, it can also be a great deodorant. Yes, some people use it for that reason. That's crazy. Baking soda is also used quite a bit in pastry for cookies and little cakes. It is also good to use if you have, say, a little fire in the kitchen. You can use baking soda to help put that out. It keeps the bad odor out. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I have quite a few experiments I do. So that one I know it works. Mm -hmm. Since I have quite a few of steaks, I started by separating them in steak plates. And most importantly, so I do mm -hmm. not confuse which steak is which, I also labeled every single one of them. He's very organized and and this looks like it's turning out to be a very good video. This way we will make our experiment much easier and you will be able to follow every step. The very first one is gonna be the control. This one will have nothing but salt on it. You see, this is something I like to do that it's called dry brine. Mm -hmm. And even though it has a fancy name, it's very simple. You basically season your steak with salt, put it in the refrigerator overnight so that the salt can penetrate nicely and deeply into the meat. Dry brining is a good method to use, especially if you have a cut of meat that's a very 
tough. Now dry brining will also season the meat if you're doing this ahead of time, but the thing that you need to keep in mind is that the salt will extract moisture. In soda steak I did the same exact thing, but instead of using salt I only used baking soda. I also ensured that the steak was nicely covered, but at the same time without overdoing it. We don't want to put 15 pounds of baking soda on it. And like I always said, I did add it to both sides. As you can see, a nice thin layer is the way to go. Now the only thing left to do is to leave this one in the refrigerator for 4 hours. Now the very next one we're gonna combine both things. And basically this is how it works. I first added the baking soda, then I threw in some salt. You know if you leave the steak for a while, moisture will come out because of the salt. However, now that moisture is gonna mix up with the baking soda. And once that's done, it will penetrate back into the steak. That is basically what osmosis is. Guys, write down in the comments down below which one you think is going to be the better one. Is it going to be the control of the normal steak? Or is it going to be the baking soda? It, just having this on a steak, um, I haven't tried this before, but I don't think it would be nice. Now is this gonna have a much better penetration than the baking soda by itself? Well, we're gonna find out real soon. Because now the only thing left to do is to let this rest on my refrigerator for 4 hours. Once the time was up, I took out the control and take a look at this. This red color is a sign that the salt penetrated in the mm -hmm. meat. And you can still see the osmosis process underneath. We know this works and that's why this one is the control. You can also see the salt is extracting moisture from the meat. Yes, so like I said, you need to keep this in mind. Here's the baking soda by itself. As you can clearly see, there's almost no sign of baking soda anymore. It also gave a nice red mm. color to the steak. But most importantly, when I hold it in my hand, it feels soft. Yes, a little bit more mm. tender. And it seemed like the fibers of the steak is separating. That is a wonderful thing. Mm. The only thing I have concern is the taste. I don't know about you, but I've tasted baking soda before and it does not taste that great. But that is to be determined real shortly. As you know, we still have this one left, the baking soda and salt. And as you can see, the salt did its mm -hmm. job. However, you can clearly see a little bit of baking soda left. So it seems like yeah. it did not penetrate as much as the baking soda by itself. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly, this one feels even more tender. If I had to give a scale mm -hmm. from 1 to 10, control would be 0. The previous one with yeah. baking soda only I would give it a 5, but this one I would give it an 8. That's very interesting to see the difference between the two, or between the three I should say. Very interesting. But now the next thing to do is to make sure I wash it all off. Hopefully this yeah. will take out that weird flavor from the baking soda. If you don't rinse that off extremely well, you're gonna have the residual flavor of baking soda. Um, and even still, if you do have that flavor and you do want to try this at home, then if you have that flavor I would suggest putting a sauce or something on it to try to get rid of that flavor because otherwise you'll notice it. If you don't wash it off, I already know it's gonna be terrible. Because when I tell you baking soda tastes bad, it does. I made sure to rinse every single steak and of course also pat it dry. As I'm doing this, I am totally aware that I'm also removing a little bit of the salt. Other means that we use to tenderize meat is by using a meat mallet or a hammer by pounding the meat to help tenderize it. Another method is also with a marinade. The marinades will penetrate the meat, help break down the fibers, and it will help tenderize them as well. So I went ahead and re-seasoned both experimental steaks. The control one, however, there was no need for salt. To season them, I added in all of them a good amount of black pepper and garlic powder. Because as you already know, that is my favorite seasoning. Now, chefs are a little divided on this. Some say use, some say don't. You don't want to use freshly cracked black pepper on a steak and then put the steak on an open flame. It can burn the black pepper and burnt black pepper will impart a very bitter flavor on the meat. Now, not every kitchen does this. Some chefs, like I said, do use black pepper uh, with seasoning the steak. But the other thing is that anytime you have a very good quality piece of steak, the last thing that you want to do is to cover that up with another spice. Salt is the most important ingredient in the kitchen. It brings out the flavor with anything. Most of the time, when you have a high quality piece of meat, all you need is a little bit of salt. That's it, nothing else. Then again, if you have you know, a cheaper type of meat, you may want to put a rub or something on it. And there are some excellent dry rubs and sauces. Who is to go ahead and cook them. And for that, I'll be first putting a beautiful sear on them using butter. Once that's done, I'll be cooking them in indirect heat until I reach an internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Once that's done, it's time to taste. So now I say it is enough talking and it is time to cook them. So let's do it. 
Guys, let me know what your favorite temp for meat is. Write down in the comments down below and tell me, is it rare or is it blue? Is it rare? Is it medium, medium well, uh, well done? Mine personally is between medium or medium rare. So everyone is different. You can always cook a steak more if it's not done enough, but for me, overcooked or well done is a little, it's a little too much. This is a very good song. I like it. I like its style. This is an important thing, he's letting the meat rest. This is very important to let it rest for about the same amount of time that you cooked it. All right, everybody, here we have our beautiful steaks, Mama. Are you hungry? I'm starving, this thing smells amazing. <laughs> it does smell fantastic. We obviously have an experiment when you see three steaks like this. That goes without saying. Well, you're, you're already used to it. I don't need to tell <laughs> that we have an experiment, everybody. That's what I love to do, everybody. I love to learn new things, and I'll tell you one thing. Every single experiment I do, even if it's a fail, I learn something new. Yep. You agree, Mama? I agree. Yeah, that's very true. You learn from your mistakes, and sometimes you learn more from your mistakes than from your achievements. Today, we are testing tenderness. That's all I care about. Okay. And if there's an off flavor, because, well, I'm not going to say anything, yes? Of course, there's <laughs> going to be an off flavor. <laughs> Mau Mau is already sweating bullets, and I like it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go for the very first one, okay? Okay. Oh, ooh. <laughs> oh, I even oh got a hiccup God. on that one. <laughs> wow. wow. Huh? That one felt like a shoe leather, Mama. Yes. <laughs> I see you even went for a small piece. I'm Mama, after you. No, I, I don't want to be here chewing gum for an hour. <laughs> very first one. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Even though it was hard when I spoke it, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. It tastes amazing. Mm, but you still chewing? It feels soft when you chew, uh -huh. but it doesn't break apart. <laughs> so you have to keep chewing it. If you're going to be using this cut, I highly suggest to tenderize it, not just using a dry brine. Uh, pound it, slow cook it, really try to tenderize it because otherwise it's going to be, like they said, it's going to be like rubber. It's going to be like shoe leather. Ain't you in it. Yes. Ain't you in it. And then a little bit more after that. The flavor <laughs> is phenomenal, everybody. I would mm. say that this is oh, a man. very tasty steak. Mm. It's, just, it's just tough. When you bite it, 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 it has a nice give. Yeah. It's just the fibers are not breaking apart. I agree. That's what you get when you eat an eye round, Mama. That's an eye round. <laughs> it's softer than the regular, than the usual eye round. It is a little bit softer than the regular eye round, and that's probably because I dry brine it. You know what I mean? Every okay. time you dry brine it, it gives a little extra uh uh and makes your steak better, everybody. I'm telling you, if you're not using the dry brine technique, do it. Let's go for the second one, Mama. If you have a really tough piece of meat, it's good to dry brine, but beef tenderloin, a little different. So you probably can tell that that one is our control already. Mm. And you're still chewing. Now look at my mouth. <laughs> you're still chewing. So that's our control. If any other ones is more tender than that, mm. I want to know. But most importantly, if there's a weird flavor, yeah? Okay. I think huh. there's a bit of a flavor to it. What do you think, Mama? Were these three from the same piece of meat? Same piece of meat, same roast. That one is weird because this one was soft when you chew, but the fibers didn't break it. Mm -hmm. That one is tougher when you chew, but the fibers break <laughs> easier. <laughs> mm. So you would say that it is more tender? It is more tender. I agree 100%. It is more tender, but I will say this. It has a different flavor. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah. 
it, I'm it, not it, happy with this flavor. <laughs> That's why I asked you if it was the same because it didn't taste like it the didn't same taste. Thing. Yeah, I'm not happy with this uh, little bit uh, different flavor. How mm. do you like it? It's not the best. It's not. I know. I would say this is a much more tender steak. But overall, I prefer to eat that one because the taste is better. I prefer. What would you guys rather have? Would you rather have excellent flavor and it be like rubber, like chew leather? Or would you rather have something that is a perfect texture to it, but it doesn't taste that good? Let me know. You prefer chewing a tastier steak than a softer steak, <laughs> <Exactly>. I <almost>. almost. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened with this one. And if you ask if it is more tender, absolutely. It is more tender. It is more tender. Yes, it is. Okay, this one here, you ready? Right. Let's see. I mean, it's just it feels weird, right? When you it, stab it, it with the weird. <laughs> they're just so 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 not tender, right? It's crazy. Very last one. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Oh. More <laughs> tender. But I can't. Do you feel that flavor? Is it just me? Yeah. You feel the flavor, right? Yeah. That flavor is weird, everybody. That's a weird flavor, man. Oh. I don't enjoy that flavor whatsoever. It looks like you're gonna need a sauce with it to really cover that flavor up. Oh, it takes the beefiness from the from the steak. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is, everybody. If you ask me, does it work? Is it, it works. more tender, Mama? It is more tender. Absolutely. It is more tender, but I am going for the first one because yeah. the flavor of the first one is amazing. Mm -hmm. I was going to say this one feels like a mix of these two because this one mm -hmm. is soft, but it doesn't break apart. That one breaks apart, but it's not that soft. That one is soft and breaks apart and it has a weird taste. How about you fight them? I'm all, you're becoming a steak, I mean, uh, I mean, a steak uh, <laughs> expert, everybody, because you're right on the money. Here's the deal. Mm -hmm. This is the baking soda mm. experiment for tenderizing mm -hmm. i added a little bit of baking soda i know it sounds weird <laughs> but hey don't be alarmed because you know when you go to chinese restaurant and they make that uh you know chopped up beef uh, beef with broccoli and stuff yeah. they always put a little bit so it's not like out of the ordinary yeah, no, no. if anyone does work in a chinese restaurant let me know if this is true because I, I want to see if this is true or not. Please let me know. We eat stuff with baking soda all the time. Yeah, but hey, guys, it yeah. puts an off flavor to the steak, man. I'm telling you right now, I do not enjoy that steak. But in regards to does it work? Does it work? It works. It works. It makes the steak more tender. At the same time, I will be going back for the first oh, one. That first one is the best. No, first one. Oh my god. Yeah. It's chewy though. <laughs> it's like a just, chewing gum. Just a little bit more. You're probably losing like 10 more calories just by chewing with your mouth. There you go. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you have to work the cheek muscles a little bit. Jaw muscles. Maybe if you're gonna put a sauce on it. Mm, that's probably why <laughs> they do it in the Chinese restaurants. Yeah. yeah. Then it can cover yeah. the flavor of you the steak. Cover the flavor. And you'll cover yeah. that. Too. If you cover the flavor, it will be good. But if you're doing it as a steak for a tasting steak, an amazing grilled steak, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work whatsoever. But it does make the steak more tender. Let's be clear. Let's give it up where the credit is due. Yeah, Mama? Yeah. It there does you work. go. Mm. It does work. That was a very interesting little experiment. I'm definitely gonna have to check out more of Guga's foods. He did an excellent job, um, but I like this because, you know, in the end, if we don't experiment, we never find new techniques or new methods, new combinations that take us to, say, another level or help improve something that, well, it could be improved. In the end, guys, let me know your thoughts down below in your comments, but I do have to agree with them. I don't think baking soda would work with steak, at least for the flavor. It's not going to work, but if it does tenderize it and if they do use it in Chinese restaurants, that is quite interesting. In any case, I hope you did enjoy this video. Share, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And guys, if you want another interesting video or a delicious recipe, then you should click on this video here. And I will see you guys again very soon. Until next time, take care.